Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this is experiment two of electrolysis, and uh, this experiment is going to consist of doing some larger pieces than what I'm used to, but I'm going to use the traditional method with the steel anodes. I'm sorry I can't answer all the comments because there's just too many of them, but uh, thank you for, for giving the comments, but don't be offended if I do not answer them. There are uh, a few that I sometimes do answer, but some require long answers or I don't have an answer for. But I've also heard from some of you that you're having trouble finding my videos, and there's over 350 of them. But to find my video playlist, which I've just recently uh, uh, experimented with, uh, go to uh, www.youtube.com slash user slash Mr. Pete 222 and there will be this list of uh, uh, playlists. And they're divided up like the, the What Is It Mystery Tool. Uh, all of the mystery tools will be there and shop tips 1 through 100 and, and so on, right on down the line. So take a look at that if you're having trouble. Also, when you're on my home page, you can uh, search just Tubal Cane rather than YouTube in general. In my travels, I've come across a whole batch of these uh, these are sheet metal stakes. Some of you know what these are, but uh, tinners and sheet metal workers use these to, to form the metal. And they came in uh, quite a variety of shapes, but there's probably about 10 basic shapes. And Pexto and Niagara were probably the two biggest makers. But here I have in this pan a, uh, what's called a hollow mandrel. And it's very rusty, and I'd like to clean that up. Now on the back side of it, I guess that's why they call it hollow. Well, I'm a champion of the obvious on that. But in here there is tar or asphalt or something, and I'm not sure why that is there or if it was put in at the factory, possibly to deaden the sound when they, when they hammer on it. I, I really don't know. That probably will not come off with the electrolysis. I did scrape it with a chisel, and I spent way too much time on it. So now I want to remove the rust by this electrolysis method. Now, Shop's dog Sam likes to do these real large projects, flywheels and so on. You need a big container for these. Again, I'm hoping my wife doesn't watch this video because this big container here, I found this under our bed. And uh, she had Christmas wrapping, uh, rolls of Christmas paper in there. And uh, I snuck that out. Got it down here in the basement. I hope I don't ruin it too bad because I'd like to put it back when I'm done, but I suppose it'll be too stained that I'll have to sneak it out to the recycler. But anyway, it's just the right size on the diagonal for this hollow mandrel. Now I got the mandrel setting uh, on wood so, simply so it won't be on the setting on the bottom. And uh, now I'm going to add uh, the solution. Remember, watch the other video if you haven't seen it, but I'm mixing hot water this time with uh, the super. Uh, washing soda here, Arm & Hammer brand. Do not confuse it with baking soda. And uh, probably a, a cup or two of it in here. It's not very critical at all. So I will do that off camera and I suppose that's going to take at least five gallons. That took eight gallons and I used warm water as if I was going to do a load of diapers. And I have uh, this red wire attached underwater to the uh, hollow mandrel. And that is the uh, negative. And the anodes here are the positive. And I've got them daisy chained together. And there's four of them. You can use as many as you want. Uh, uh, and I will move them slightly because this is going to take several days. And I'll move them into different positions. And i got to be careful that the these uh, these do not touch the hollow mandrel here. And I hope my wife doesn't come down here and then move something on me and then discover what I've done. And that's what she looks like. So now watch it as I plug it in. There's a funny reflection there from the window. Ignore that. I'm going to plug it in right now. Be careful when you do this. This isn't something for children to do. And I'm sure that Underwriters Lab wouldn't like all my connections here, but uh, as she's starting to foam up already. I, I was a little dubious here about some of my connections because uh, I'm starting with some kind of rusty metal to start with. I scraped it a little bit, but it's not 
great by any means, but it is starting to stir. The power source being the uh, Sears 10 amp battery charger, and wow, we're up to 10 amps too. It's over 10 amps. Man, that's going to raise my light bill when I uh, if I leave this on for several days. And uh, if you have a setting here, make sure you set it for manual. I'm going to be going to the Chicago Auto Show tomorrow. So this will set at least for uh, one day, maybe two, and I will check it out again. I want to look at the Ford trucks this year because they just came out with all aluminum bodies that will be released this fall. I was kind of interested in that. You know they've taken an $8,000 truck and turned it into a $45,000 truck. You old guys like me remember they didn't have armrests or or sun visors or anything in the original old trucks. I mean there was no amenities, no headliner. And you can see already we got some floatsome here, whatever that is. And I'll be back in a couple hours and we'll take a look at this. I decided to switch to the smaller battery charger, so I got the little little uh, Willie Schumacher battery charger here, and I set it on the uh, two amp setting, but it was drawing about. 5 amps and I just heard the circuit breaker pop. So uh, already my experiments run into a little problem here so I'm going to let that thing cool down although it doesn't it doesn't feel hot but uh, something caused it to trip. It's 10 minutes later and that thing has cooled down. It's about 4 amps right now. But what I've done here is I've disconnected two of the anodes. So the two that are closest to the camera here are disconnected and we just got that far one and the diagonal here in the front and uh, we're going to let that go for a while. Kind of scares me when it's drawing that much uh, amperage or not the 4 amps but uh, the 10 and 12 amps which I know exceed the capacities of uh, both of these little uh, chargers. They're 12 volt. It's been about six hours now and the water is starting to look a little murky and I've moved the anodes around in a different position so that uh, we got a little activity going in all areas so it's just about bedtime and uh, it's at 5 amps now so We'll see what it looks like in the morning. It's six in the morning and old Tubal Cain just got out of bed. And that water is looking pretty funky this morning. And the uh, amperage is uh, down to about two amps. Let's take a look at what some of these anodes look like. So it's working away. Now Tubal Cane's going to get on the train and go to the auto show in Chicago while this continues. And, you know, as Shop Dog Sam would say, this is like having a hired hand because it'll be working all the time I'm playing. Well, I went to the Chicago auto show yesterday and. Uh, it was 22 degrees below on the way to the train station to Amtrak and had a good day saw the the new Ford trucks and uh, uh, their prototypes aluminum bodies so that was interesting although they, they don't look any different but uh, it's quite a change to have an aluminum body and they're like 600 pounds lighter now uh, the water is getting pretty funky looking here and you can see there's a lot of uh, material on the anodes huh. 
Oh, this is kind of a funny phenomenon. I'm going to scrape these off onto a piece of cardboard or something and then uh, see if that helps. And I'm going to move the wood down into a slightly different position, uh, the wood that's underneath the, uh, of the hollow mandrel, and uh, see how it's progressing. And the uh, battery charger says about 2 amps. I guess I forgot to tell you that on the way back from the auto show at Union Station there was a three hour delay on our Amtrak because the toilets were frozen. It was a mess at Union Station in Chicago and I'm glad to be home in the warmth and sanctity of my shop. Okay, I've, uh, I've raised this out of the water just so you can look at it a little bit and it's, uh, you know, it never is shiny when you take it out of, of this bath and uh, it's quite black, but yet it's uh, it, it's closer to the base metal. It looks like now I've scraped all the anodes, and uh, this is what I got off it of it so far. Quite a bit of debris, so I'm going to move the wood, lower this back in there, and turn the power back on. And uh, I'm sure that at least for now the amperage will be increased on the battery charger. I have noticed that when you uh, put in new anodes or clean the anodes that the amperage goes up. So now at uh, this is the low setting and this is the high setting. I don't know why. Okay, that's the high setting and it's about uh, 3 amps now. So we'll let it set like that for a whole day. and. From time to time I move the anodes into a slightly different position. And you can use as many as you want. I'm, I'm using four. And I'm starting to see a little activity again. You see how the water is moving? Okay, that's it for today, which is Wednesday, and I started this on Monday. So Friday will be the last day when I, when I take it out of here. And... Uh, I will have to add a little bit of water to this because I noticed the level is down just a little bit and uh, because the water warms up just a little bit and there's evaporation this is winter and the house is very dry so it's evaporating as well and there's a large surface area here so that's it for today.